Hello, it's Parm King, the Dungeon Master for Legends of Barovia, a Curse of Strahd campaign. Today we're going to talk about amazing books and how we can use the Foundry system to incorporate these books into our campaign. But before we start, please click the subscribe button, click the little bell so you can be notified when I come up with a new Dungeon Master tip or one of my other many videos. So let's get started. Books are an important part of our role-playing game. We should use them more often. They can be used for lore, information, spells, quests. How can we use those, incorporate those into Foundry in our role-playing game? Well, today I'm going to go through an actual book that I've created that's used in my game and the quests and everything you can connect to the book. What's really amazing about the Foundry system is they've kind of opened up the window and the door for us to do so many amazing creative things even with a book. So in Curse of Strahd, my characters have some additional quests that I've added to the Curse of Strahd. Some of these ideas I borrowed from some ideas in Reddit. By the way, visit the Curse of Strahd Reddit page. There's so much great information on there. This first map I'm going to show you because it's important because it's connected to the book is a map. It's a shared map. I made a video of this that all my players can access at any time throughout the game. They have control of the journal entries, and the only thing they can't do is they can't move their player icon. The player icon right here is the icon of where my players are. They only have observer status, but this is a great map that the different players can go ahead and enter journal entries, and they can see these certain journal entries. Some of them they can't. Anyway, what's important about this is that I've, the book that I've created references some of these journal uh, entries as well as items. So I'm going to open up here in the items directory. What I've done is created books. The first thing I would recommend doing is hit the create folder icon and create a folder called books in your items directory. And then go ahead and use the little feather over here to create a book. I'll just do one really quickly here. So we create this. I'm just going to type in the name um, story of the frog. You want to go down here and make sure it's a loot item and hit create. And now you have the story of the frog. You can easily uh, click a picture and go ahead and write in your flavored text. And there you go, you have a book. But let's take this one step further. Let's make this book really important and give it some color and creativity. So in my story, there's a book called The Fanes of Barovia, and I'm gonna open that up right here. You notice I've put a nice cover in there and I've included a lot of flavored text and pictures. This particular book helps our players go on a quest. A couple of interesting points I want to point out here. Not only did I include the author's name, but there's a link to the author. The author is somebody in the world that they can meet to learn more about this book. This particular book tells a story about three phase in Brovia that buried some gems um, and they've been cursed and the players are going to try to um, restore the shrines, find the gems, and restore Barovia to the once pretty place that it was. It has a little section in here about the three different phase, and I included a nice picture of the phase. It has a section about the shrines. I have also included locations where the shrines are on the map. It includes some items that they will need to do to perform the ritual. It includes the information about the gems the fall of the Fae, and reinstating the Fae. So pretty much the book has everything in it. What's really interesting and what Foundry allows us to do is create links. So the first link I did create in here is to uh, Celeborn, which is a druid character that I created, which they're going to meet on the way. Now notice how I can just click on this and that character comes up. The same thing with the different shrines. There's a shrine in uh, Yester Hill or the Windmill, for instance. If they click on the Windmill, a, the windmill journal entry pops up. Now I mentioned before that I created a map with journal entries. If we click on uh, the journal entries over here, you'll see this first one called maps. These are just blank journal entries that I allow my players to go ahead and fill out information, share notes. So this is kind of their map and their journals. So I put one in here called windmill. I didn't put any text in here. They all have access to it and they can go ahead they all have access and ownership, so they can go ahead and write in their own notes, share these notes among all the players referencing the journal. Now, your players may want to assign one person to be the journal keeper 
but I've given all my players the access to, uh, to write information on the journal. So right from the book itself, it'll open up that journal entry. Additionally, I put some items in here. For instance, they're going to have to find, in order to do the ritual, depending on what time of the year is, perhaps the, uh, the tesser flower. Um, by the way, Edelweiss is one of my favorite flowers, so I use the picture of the Edelweiss. They'll have to go and find the flowers in the mountains of Barovia. Now, you'll notice that even in the, the, icon, the item of the tesser flower, I have a reference back to the book. So if they happen, let's say they don't find uh, the book first. Let's say they don't acquire the book. Maybe they acquire an item like the tesser flower, and then they can click on this and learn about the book. So you can cross-reference back and forth items, location, books. We can even do that in the windmill. So let's say we open up the windmill here. We can put a text that goes back and references the book. So in this particular book, I've referenced an actor. I've referenced locations. I've referenced items. So I've referenced three things in here. For instance, they need to find these items like the, the red gem here. And here's a picture of the red gem. Again, the gem back references or cross references to the book. So how do I put these in here? Well, first of all, Foundry gives you a very powerful editing tool. It's almost like a full word processor right here, which you can use in your journals. You can use them in items. You can use in your actors biography. And we can really take our time and really expand and make this a a real creative, fun adventure with some mysteries and all kinds of stuff in here. So if we click on here, you'll notice that this turns into the editor. And the um, syntax for referencing stuff uh, in, the, um, in your foundry is the at sign. So if you use at actor, make sure it's case sensitive, no spaces, at actor here, and then in brackets, the name of the actor. Uh, Celeborn is my druid character that wrote this book that they may run into in here. So they'll have reference to that character. If we scroll down and we want to see locations where I put them in the shrine, those are at journal entries. You'll notice here it says at journal entry. Make sure that it's case sensitive, no space, and Berez, and then it'll go to the journal entry and find the journal entry called Berez, or they'll find the journal entry uh, Yester Hill or journal entry windmill. And then if you want to do items, for instance, I had the items that they had to find, whether it was the gems, the green gem, or the tesser flower, the bread, it's just at item bracket and the name of the item. Again, case sensitive, make sure that the space, the best and easiest way to do this is go ahead and just open up that particular item and click it over. So what we're going to do is we're going to add to windmills already because there's a reference to the windmill here, uh, this book. So we're going to, to go ahead and say item, and I'm going to copy this over here because it's pretty long, and go to the windmill and just type this in here. Now the this is, again, the character's journal. Sometimes it's okay. I'll put a little note in there, but I'm going to just do this for shits and giggles. Uh, reference. Ref. And I'm going to say uh, item at uh, what item, and then it's bracket control B, close bracket, save entry, and now you can see they can click on this, and there's a reference already in their journal entry for the windmill referencing this book. So you can go ahead and cross friends for instance journal entries items actors, locations. This makes everybody's life so much more easier. Plus, now we can actually have books become quest items. For instance, they find this book. Let's say they just find it. And they're going, wow, there's, there's a whole backstory going on here in our campaign that is an optional or side quest they can do. Now, my players don't have to do this quest if they don't want to. It's a Curse of Stroud is kind of a sandbox game, but I threw some additional quests into the game and, and that's woven into the backstory of some of my characters and this happens to be one of them. I highly suggest incorporating books uh, into your campaign, whether you just want to include information on lore or maybe help them get to a location or maybe describe an interesting location or maybe there's some information on there on how to, to build a spell. Maybe you have a particular spell that the characters want to learn or you've made up a spell and they find this book and then they have to go find the ingredients 
to, to make that spell. Maybe it's a, a charred piece of wood from a lightning strike and the, the, you know, the rare forest frog and whatever. And they have to go out and find these items, which you've written in the book, and you've linked the items, described the items, described the locations roughly where they're found. One of the things in my particular book that they're going to have to do is in order to provide the um, – Part of the ritual is they're going to, depending on what time of the year is, they're going to have to bring a loaf of bread or a pumpkin or an apple or a tusk or a deer skull. So if it's in the winter time, they're going to go have to hunt a deer or hunt the great boar and get that tusk. So this kind of gives them some ideas and some additional little tiny flavored side quests to complete that main quest idea. Again, uh, books are a great idea. Foundry's done an amazing job so we can incorporate these books and link them to so many things. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you click like on the video, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can get updated the next time I come up with a DM tip for you. Anyway, this is Parm King, Dungeon Master for Legends of Barovia, signing off. And may all your roles be critical, critical 20s that are, not, not, not critical ones. Thanks.